Did you know that energy management system like the DCC9 and 12 can manage other types of loads? Hi, I'm Jerome, technical advisor for RVE, and today I want to show you how to manage uh, other types of installation using the DCC products, ranging from solar to uh, hot tubs. Keep watching and I'll show you how the better EV charging works. So next to me here, we have the DCC 9 and 12, uh, which is the product in the DCC lineup. Uh, these can be used as charge or industrial controllers uh, to monitor a feeder, and uh, they're gonna switch power on and off uh, to the connected load uh, off when it reaches 80% of the capacity and back on when it's able to do so. Uh, because our patent is not limited to only EVSC and EV charging stations, uh, we can use the, the products for uh, any other type of load. So that's the advantage and versatility of the DCC products. So in this video, we'll be talking about uh, connecting a DCC to a generator panel, a hot tub, and a solar panel. I'll, give, I'll be giving you an idea of uh, where the DCC uh, must be installed and what you might choose one for uh, your project. Uh, if you're interested in having the same material I'm de demoing right now, uh, look in the description of this video for the links. So in the uh, product catalog, uh, in the other DCC application section, uh, we're going to have the schematics that follow. I've put it on the screen so it's easier to demonstrate. Um, so with this one, we have a DCC installed on a generator panel. So the dry contact of this DCC will be connected to uh, uh, monitoring the, uh, the generator in real time. And as soon as the generator itself uh, gets over 80% of its capacity, the connected load to the DCC uh, will be shut off. So it's interesting uh, when you want to control, let's say, heating device and your generator is a bit overloaded, so you can shed those load and can be uh, turned back on when the generator has a bit of room to power them. So on the next schematic, example B, you'll have the DCC connected, uh, the, its dry contacts will be connected on the generator itself and you want it to turn the DCC off as soon as it's powered on. Uh, you will have the CTs monitoring the main uh, panel. Uh, so anytime there's an overload, uh, the DCC will still be able to power up uh, the connected load. Thing is here, uh, the best example I could give you is uh, the DCC will power an EV charger and you don't want the EV charger to be powered on when the gener generator is powered on. So uh, you will be able to uh, instantly turn off the DCC uh, when, uh, when it, the generator itself turns on. So this schematic represents the hot tub or the AC installation, which is the most uh, common request that we receive. Um, because those loads are really hard to fit on a 100 amp panel, given their size. Um, so in this scenario, you will have the DCC hooked up to a breaker inside the panel and you'd run all the way to a GFCI or a spocket commonly uh, named and then you would run right away to the appliance. This GFCI protection, of course, is uh, mandatory for uh, powering off those loads. Um, note as well that the DCC can be installed outside since it's NEMA 3R, uh, so there will be no worries with this installation right here. This, uh, this schematic represents the installation of a DCC on, uh, on a panel uh, that is powered also by solar energy. Um, the difference between this one and the generator is basically the inverter, the DC disconnect, and the uh, AC disconnect in some scenarios. Um, it's going to work the same way with the generator. Uh, basically, instead of being powered off by the generator, it will be powered off by in the inverter. So again, you will use the dry contacts uh, and run them all the way to the inverter. So as soon as solar energy kicks in, uh, if the inverter says there's too much load, you can shut off the DCC and the control load. For example, it could be an EV car, it could be heating, hot tub, no matter what you want, uh, that you would not like to be powered with solar energy. 
This one is a slightly different installation. The only big difference is that the solar panel will feed the inverter and then to a sub-panel. Uh, the DCC will still be connected on the main panel and the DCC will still be uh, controlled by the inverter uh, the same way it was in the previous one. For any of you who would like the documentation uh, regarding safety or just to pass the inspection, uh, we do have all the documentation on our website. Uh, this documentation being the installation manual, the spec sheet, as well as the uh, DCC at the station. Uh, those documents also uh, are linked in the description below. You like what you saw today? Well, hit that subscribe button so you will be able to watch more technical content just like this one.